Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to look at this. I hope I got rid of the focusing table there. Also, I have a cold, as you can probably tell from my voice. Uh, today I'm going to look at this, which is a damaged Ethercon cable. Uh, this one's manufactured by Nutrik, any WTRIK, I think, or possibly any V. Uh, sorry, N E U T R I K. Uh, this one's damaged where the this end of it, the enclosure has come off, and uh, I was asked to repair it because people were plugging it into um, the circular XLR jack on the wall, and then next to it plugging this into a standard RJ45 jack on the wall. The network didn't have uh, loopback prevention, and then it would just pull down the network. Um, whereas with a correct cable with this at both ends, that wouldn't be a problem because uh, there's only two circular XLR based connections uh, and they couldn't loop it back into uh, into the, the same place it was coming from, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, ignore this end, that end should have the same connector on it. So this seems to be used in lighting and possibly some sound setting uh, setups in uh, media environments, so halls or um, auditoriums and it's quite good uh, it just means that there's a, a bunch of XLR connections to plug into the side of an equipment cabinet and onto the connections on the wall um, but our handles are also quite rugged so this compared to the other end say just a plain network connection like that uh, this one will definitely wear harder than this so you can already see that the um, outer jacket has come out from being clamped in on the RJ45 connector there or the, the jack. Anyway I just wanted really to see um, how this is constructed. I haven't yet taken this to bits and it just seems interesting to me. Um, it, these cables are quite expensive if you buy them on Amazon as a replacement um, but I wondered whether, you, I haven't looked, whether you could get just these uh, clamp and plastic arrangements, use your own RJ40, uh, Cat5 or Cat6 lead and put your own connectors on the end and then clamp it into one of these XLR type connectors. So yeah, it's an Ethercon connection if you wanted to search on Amazon or eBay. And the only difference I can see is because it uses this little tab here to hold it into the socket in the wall as the clip. There isn't the clip on the uh, RJ45 connector or if there is it's held down permanently because otherwise you plug that into the socket and then you'd undo the clip on the XLR socket and pull and the RJ45 plastic clip would also be holding it in. So uh, yeah that's that's not a thing. So let's see how you undo this and what's inside, which I expect is not a lot. Uh, on this bit, there's, I'll undo this bit actually, right on the end here is a little, not really a zip tie, but a little plastic clip which holds this end bit on, uh, this entire plastic guide. Apparently uh, too tight to undo with just your fingernails. Ah, there we go. That's unclipped that, so you can see it comes away from the the cable guide or the gland there. Anyway, let's unscrew this bit off of the XLR connector or the the metal part. And what do we have? That entire thing has slid away. Let's undo do that into its little modules. So you've got a little uh, screw up cap or cover. You have this plastic uh, strain relief. And then we are into the XLR type connector, which I would have thought would actually have just split open at this point, but it looks more uh, substantial than I was expecting. 
So I'm just going to push, ah, there we go. So it just pushes from the back here, or the front, depending uh, what, you, what bit you want to call that. Okay, whoops. So I can see how the other one fell off or got dismantled and uh, came to bits, and why that didn't have its end on it anymore. And you can see that all this strain relief has actually kept, in fact, kept it so well in there and so well clamped in that it's actually pushed it and bunched it up a little bit at this end. Uh, but that's quite good. So actually, yeah, it does saying it actually does have the plastic tab on it. It's just permanently uh, pushed down. Is it pushed down by this metal bracket? Yeah, it looks like it's just permanently held down by the metal bracket in there. Um, yeah, that's got to be the A standard, I think, I believe. That's uh, certainly I'm used to white and orange, starting with white and orange at the extremity. Um, whereas on this one, they're starting uh, with brown and white. So that's uh, not particularly interesting. It's not a crossover cable because it'll be the same at both sides, which it is. So it is just a standard Ethernet cable, just in a, a different set of colours in the end, which isn't a problem, really. So, quite a nice, very well-built connector there. Or housing, I should say. And yeah, so if you needed to repair one of these, and in fact, oh, it's a shame I'm missing the other one of these, because if this one, the other one of these still existed, I could repair this one. Um, but yeah, you would crimp your RJ45 connector onto the end of your Cat6 or Cat5. Probably push that all the way in. And then it, it has its own stop. I don't think you can, you know, can't go all the way through. So I'm not entirely sure what causes that to catch. So I would have expected there's not really much tapered on a Cat5 cable, or an RJ45 plug. So I wonder what it's catching on that stops it just going all the way through. I think that's going to have to remain a mystery. I know maybe this, this lip here is uh, slight, it juts out slightly, so okay, that gives it something uh, as a guide to stop and so you can't just push the socket all the way through so uh, let's put this cable clamp back on and just reassemble it and there we go we've uh, dismantled it and put it back together so put that back into there surprisingly difficult to line up without actually looking down the barrel yep then strain relief or uh, another cable guide it also has the added function of when you screw this in it then clamps down much more onto the cable and just all holds everything in place it seems better designed than I was expecting so screw that on before I do the final bit of that clamp And then and this is almost like a zip tie, as I was saying earlier. Just clicks down over the end, keeps everything in place. So yeah, pretty good strain relief and uh, wiggle protection, really, for fatigue of the cable. And uh, certainly incredibly ruggedizes the uh, RJ45 connector in that. You can run that over with chairs and all sorts of other stuff and uh, it would survive. One of the ones I saw recently was just a bare RJ45 connector and obviously I'd had something run over it and the plastic tabs between the contactors uh, or the contacts on the plug, the plastic had been basically almost folded over so you'd plug it in and it would click in 
uh, but several of the connections on the end of the uh, plug weren't making connection because the metal tabs that go down onto the contact were being held up by the plastic which had been scraped across over the top of it. Um, so yeah, that would it solves a lot of problems, so it's not a bad idea really. Um, and it's the first time I'd seen it in many, many years, decades of working. Um, so yeah, good to know that they exist. So they're called Ethercon and uh, Nutrick, uh, definitely one of the manufacturers, but looking on Amazon there's, you know, generics are available. Um, yeah, hopefully this video has been interesting. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you.